All right, welcome to the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society Science Chat. Today is December 17th, 2016. So I see we've got a pretty good crowd here today. And um, this is sponsored by the CNPS. And I have our little slide here with the uh, website. So if you'd like to support us, uh, please renew your membership or join. And uh, we're on social media, so you can like us on Facebook. And uh, if you join, uh, you can publish your work here with our blogs and you can participate in, in the science conferences. So with that, uh, let's start our conversation today and see if there's any particular uh, topics that people would like to talk about today. I see we do have here Harry Ricker. I know Harry's very um, active in our email discussions. We've had quite a few uh, discussions recently um, going on in the topics of uh, relativity and what what is space is made out of. So I wondered if uh, Harry might want to uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with those discussions. Okay, here is Slobodan. I just received uh, an email from uh, Harry Ricker uh, related to my email, kind of responding to, I guess, David David uh, uh, Tom, Tombe regarding the, uh, as I understood, Katz problem. Actually, it was about uh, vehicle field experiments that I assume it is the same thing. So I offered a kind of uh, explanation for that, and uh, I got. I, I thought it might be interesting to to discuss this because you know, kind of, this pretty old problem. And Kat, Dr. Kat is a member of this group, and really, it would it would uh, provide us with with the insights and something that is tangible and you know, very very relevant for everything, for all levels, all scales of reality. Yeah. So, so if, if you may want to just to look into the email, maybe, and then based on that, decide. And... Well, let me put up the email here that we got this just morning, this morning. And this is actually a new topic you guys have been starting. It, it, it has been lingering for quite some time, at least between myself and, and, and uh, David Tombe, and occasionally uh, put forward uh, to the group. And there is some interest also from... Uh, Dennis Allen and some other people regarding the gravitation, electro, electrogravity, electromagnetism as a gravi, you know, gravitation, anti-gravitation, and so on. So, so should be very, very important. And the topic, the issue of of divergence, uh, uh, non-zero divergence in, 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 the, in the ether, you know, has been lingering all the time, and then it's been big obstacle, you know, and from Ampere or the heavy side, and uh, up to the uh, cats, and of course, many other people, maybe just of late, it has been kind of experienced, evidenced all the time, you know, kind of, why should we kind of avoid that, delving into, into that subject and really resolving that topic? It would help us tremendously. Okay, thank you, sir. Let's see now. How did you get into the discussion? The original topic of the discussion was uh, the discussion that space really can't be nothing. Yeah. So, okay. There was some kind of uh, the discussion uh, started a month ago. I think initially by Vira, Viraj and then later Bennett uh, got into it and so on. And 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 you yourself, right? Regarding yep. the you know relationship between energy and matter, you know. Energy and matter, and kind of, you know. Do you remember you you had you you just recently had kind of um, an email, long email, and then it was responded by some people, including myself. So. Yep. It is actually. Now. I mean, that, related to that topic, that that most fundamental topic, of course. It had been started uh, earlier for some similar reasons uh, in the realm of electromagnetism, and but you know. I mean, uh, Brian, actually, Brian, between Harry. myself and Tobe, it, it started uh, uh, related to, 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 to my kind of contribution that actually Hertz formulation on Maxwell equation 
uh, made uh, it uh, uh, unnecessary to have anything like like Lawrence Force and so on to have it like you know special relativity postulate and many other things you know and from there on it was between myself and 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 David Tombe and of late it is related very much to the topic of energy versus matter and then kind of. Can I interrupt? This is Harry Ricker. Yes, yes Harry, go ahead. Who is it that's talking? That was Slobodan, and this is Franklin. All right. Okay. Um, all I have here is a phone number. Okay. Good morning to you. I guess it's uh, afternoon or evening where you are. Um, my motivation for writing that email was because this topic has been discussed quite a lot when um, on the Glenn Baxter group, we discussed this topic several years ago. There's some recordings at the Glenn Baxter site where he interviews me about um, this Ivor cat theory and the cat question. We've discussed the Wakefield experiments before and email discussions. And so we've been, we've talked about this. This has been discussed in the group. And I wrote a number of uh, um, little articles about it at the website, the uh, JCMPS site, where I have my page and I reference that. So that sort of gives people an idea about the context of the discussion. That was really my point in sending out that. Yeah, message. yeah, sure. Yeah, I I got to your website. Actually, it was the the, the starting point for me <laughs> when I got actually when I got into this issue of of cuts problem. I think. Well, as, as you know, I I um, have corresponded and talked to Ivor Cat many times, and um, some you know, and there's a big controversy. He has recently. Um, um, I don't know exactly how to put this. I, I don't think it's appeared, but there's supposed to be a little piece appearing in one of the IEEE publications. I don't know the name of it, in which he is rebutting the Italians, uh, two papers that they wrote. And he's been pretty active in discussing with people, um, you know, his response and and that sort of thing. So there's this is a, a topic that's being actively discussed. But the cat question is somewhat different than what he calls theory C. And it's not clear to me uh, whether you were talking about the cat. People mix up the cat question. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and and, the, and and this and this experiment, right? But uh, I. I Okay, I, my, my impression was actually, I, I, must, I may not be right, that actually uh, uh, the question goes about uh, whether the energy or current uh, electrical energy goes through the conductor or around the conductor, being carried by electrons in the conductor or by, <clears throat> by, by, by some structures around the conductor. You know, right? Is, is, is that the problem, actually, the cuts problem? Yes. I mean, something, the days from, from Ampere and uh, well, over, over heavy um, side and so on, right? Um, I'm sort of hesitant to talk about it because they're, uh, you know, Ivor would sort of uh, um, might berate me for uh, giving the wrong impression. But the question really, in my paper that I talk about it, if you go to my web page, I give references to the question and I show where it originated in a discussion having to in electronics world. And that um, question sort of resulted from an exchange of letters between Ivor and another um, person mm -hmm. who, who wrote letters. And the question has to do really originating has to do with the theory that electrons flow in a complete circle through a circuit. So in other words, the electrons go, go in at one terminal of the battery or the power supply and come out at the other. And the cat question has to do with that particular theory. And, um, and it's sort of changed over time um, into the cat anomaly 
and yeah. it's, and there's been a lot of confusion about what the question is really is about and so i tried to sort of straighten that out in in the article that i wrote where i discussed the background of the cat question which is and i ever insist that you keep the cat question separate from his theory or his uh, which is i think called theory c but it, it's kind of you know, I, I'm not really sure exactly uh, of the terminology. So what yep. people do is they mix up his theory with his question. Yeah, but I'm not sure that, that those are that much, uh, how to say, separated or different. Uh, in, in your papers, as far as I remember, you were actually discussing the the, 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 the aspects or, or concepts of the uh, displacement current, right? Um. And maybe maybe explaining it or related it to 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 to, to these issues. The, the, I mean the question and and the anomaly and and whatever. And in in a way, displacement current could be looked at as uh, uh, non-zero divergence in, in the field, D, B, or E in particular. And maybe maybe, maybe mostly and only. A, I mean not E, but uh, I mean A, A, right? So, uh, it, I mean. Uh, if the problem is uh, that the correspondence and kind of that, that issue, whether the current goes uh, by mediation of electrons within the, the, the conductor or not, is very much related to this uh, experiment, right? Because, because experiments can be explained, you know, I mean, because of the velocity or the propagation, it's practically impossible to, for, for something like this to happen um, by mediation of electrons in the in the in, in the conductor, and uh, these guys explained uh, that mechanism that uh, who had that uh, Hewlett Packard or I don't know had it in their systems to generate the, the pulses and so on. That, that very effect effect that the, the uh, chunk of the coaxial cable loaded. Uh, and then discharged generates the 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 the, the, the pulse, rectangular pulse that is two times as long as it takes for velocity for for C or electromagnetic waves or to to transfer that particular segment if discharged into the matched uh, determinated long coaxial cable. So I mean, then it just comes. To the very close to the issue, uh, the, the, the energy and matter, energy flow, and so on. You know, he obviously had here the energy flow. I mean, of heavy side type yeah, and the right. ampere and so on. So you know, this seems to be most crucial uh, topic and question, and we should not uh, avoid discussing this uh, this in within the whatever thread. You know, in particular this thread of energy and and, and matter, thread of electromagnetism. Electrogravity, whatever have, you know. Like I said, um, this has been discussed, um, you know, and I know Franklin has discussed this in emails with me. And uh, by the way, David's um, pronounced tomb, uh, tomb, like uh, in English, uh, tomb where a dead person is. Uh, so that's how you pronounce his name. And I've discussed this with him for many years. And so it, it's been something that we've talked about, and I tried to do document. Could you spell? Excuse me. Could you spell that name, the family name of David? Tomb. You pronounce it tomb. It's T. Tomb. I, I'm not. I, I'm not familiar with, with that word, the English word. So I'm not sure if I can. Uh, um, that's if you a, a dead spell. person spell. is. Yeah, it's tomb. It's where a dead person is. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like terminated termination, or no? It's the a place where a dead person lies. Ah, uh -huh, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. And it's David Tomb. Okay, so okay. Um, we've discussed that, and Ivor has discussed that. Um, you know, we've discussed these things. He, the experiments that are done were done to help sort of clarify the issues in that um, he made measurements at different points along the transmission line 
while the line was discharging so that you could see the waveform more clearly as it moved inside the coaxial cable. And that's really the point of the Wakefield experiments. Yeah. Okay, but so uh, you, you, did you take a look at the, so this expan um, uh, proposed explanation that I came up with uh, after after uh, David Tombe asked me to do so? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. So you responded to my to my email, but I asked uh, I'm asking now. Did you have a chance to look into this uh, text that I provided, kind of ex explanation of that particular experiment? Uh, um, in, the, in the body of email. Was breaking up. Oh. Okay, uh, in the email that you uh, responded to, uh, there is uh, offered an explanation of this experiment. It's yes, results and that, the other. Um, yeah. So what do you think? I mean, should we, okay. I, I would be uh, kind of uh, interested or available to 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 uh, maybe explain to walk over that uh, block diagram. I mean, of, <laughs> over that drawing. Other people in the meeting. Okay. Um, your audio is um, breaking up. It's mal malfunctioning, and I can't okay. quite hear you. Well, he, he okay. was saying that he responded in his email. And there was something about the findings of... I, I responded to, to David Tombe uh, with uh, explanation of this uh, vacuum field experiment, or I thought it was related to the cut problem, but I still think it should be in a certain way. And then you, David, uh, 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 replied to that uh, with these comments that you uh, made here regarding what the problem actually is and so on. So now I am proposing and asking, uh, now that we started this topic, uh, would it be opportune uh, for me to uh, walk other participants over that blog, that, over the drawing that I provided with this email? As the heterodynamical explanation of the of the vacuum field experiment. I mean, I'm showing I'm showing I'm sharing a picture of that uh, of the of the email here with this diagram. I, I really can't hear what he's saying, uh, Franklin. Okay, who, uh, could you then repeat? Who, if you. You need to talk slower. I think the uh, I, I'm not sure what's happening. The audio is cutting out. Yeah, maybe I think maybe you're I. Asking, my... My comment uh, was, I read your email. My comment was, I thought you were, I didn't understand what you were talking about at first because I thought you were talking about the cat question, which I think is a different subject. And you were sort of talking about what cat would call theory C, which is more related to the Wakefield experiment. And my comment was really to try to uh, let you know that there is some background on this that I have worked on. Yeah, okay. And um, that would be, I'm trying to be helpful in um, presenting information. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I understand that. But I mean, I, I think this topic of non zero divergence uh, of, of the A, of the magnetic vector potential. Uh, has not been brought up maybe uh, 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 earlier, right? I mean, the extension of Maxwell equations uh, based on, on that. Still, commonly, um, people not are not sure accepting non-zero divergence of any, any field in, in the electromagnetism. And here is just uh, an offer of how it would go, you know, what the divergence, non-zero divergence would okay. mean, so and, 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 you know. Well, I think this is getting a little technical. I think what you mean okay. by non-zero divergence of A refers to the fact that the magnetic... David got lost, we got lost, we lost him. Uh, did we lose Harry? Yeah. I mean, I have your uh, picture of the Wakefield experiment here. Can you see that, right? Yeah. Can you guys see that? 
So this is the Wakefield experiment. And all it is is that it's a, a coaxial cable, like, you know, like 100 feet of coaxial cable. And they measure the... Uh, no, no, they, 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 they have a small, first, a small piece. This coaxial cable shown here is just segment. I don't know how, how long. Relatively short, you know, to play a role as a yes. condensator. And, and this uh, part to the right, right hand side is the long cable terminated. Uh, you know, by by the kind of so uh, how say the, 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 the optimal impedance. You know, that segment of cable is actually that that short segment that plays the role of condensator being charged by this battery. Mm -hmm. And that small part is actually the is the long cable terminated terminated cable, and then after. So long time because this kind of really uh, 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 large uh, high, well, ohmic resistance here. Uh, after after a certain time, that this uh, 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 switch is is turned on, you know. And then what happens? At the end of this long cable, it is detected the rectangular pulse of the length that is double the length that it would take uh, electromagnetic signal to transfer the length of that short cable, of this condenser, kind of condensator. Well, and, to be more correct, it's half the voltage and twice the length. Yeah, 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 sure, yes, yes, half, half voltage and twice the length. Yeah, energy, same, same energy, kind of, right? Yes, sure. And Ivor Cat interprets that, uh, Ivor Cat interprets that to mean that there are two, um, that there is a reciprocating flow. He calls it the reciprocating capacitor. And yeah. he says that half the energy is flowing towards the load or towards the right, and half the energy is flowing towards the left. And when the switch is closed, the two waves or the energy in the two different directions separates. And exactly. what that does is it makes the pulse twice as long and half the voltage when it yes. flows. And exactly, and, and exactly is that what I offered here as an explanation for such an effect. Correct. I, I, I understand that, yes. But that's yeah. not exactly what Ivor calls the cat question. Yeah, okay, it's sure. not the cat question. But, yeah, sure, but, but should, should be closed, right? Should be closed in a way. I mean, I will check for that. I'm, I, I apologize that I mistook, mistook these two. Two things. I mean, I got into it quite recently, as as you said, you are quite, you have been there I mean, involved, and I, I saw your papers. I mean, very, 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 um, how say, um, how say, um, comprehensive uh, treatment. You know, many, many, many diagrams, many formulas, and so on, and so on. So, but you know. We are talking about, if we say we, are, we will talk, be talking about about the flow of energy, whether that energy is flowing through the conductor or around the conductor, then this experiment would be relevant. And in general, I mean, the, 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 the flow of energy, what it would mean, uh, I mean, the relationship to the, to, the, to, the, to the matter at the later stage and so on. But here, you know, kind of, I mean, I, I, I think that this um, way of explaining it based, based on the recently developed during the last 50 years, uh, aerodynamics and the actually uh, electrodynamics based on the aerodynamics should be quite compelling, you know. And here I'm kind of offering that and to 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 have the exemplify to show exactly those two flows, you know, and why why it happens so that one of those flows, one that is flowing uh, to the flowing to the right. At the moment of uh, uh, switch g being closed, just continues to to flow uh, as in a container, as as a kind of extension of this uh, of this container here. And on the left side, the left flow starts going to the left, but cannot exit because the pressure of the air is much higher, so it has to reflect or be reversed, and then continues going right. to the right. And at the moment, when this part of the ether, of the ether flow, is, uh, how say, leaked out from this uh, short segment, the, that one that will start going to the left 
and getting around uh, continues immediately after it. And when they reach one after the other, the end of the long cable, they just got recombinated into the uh, resistor or kind of um, dissipated, uh, getting those electrons into movement or, or whatever, you know. And then that would be kind of, <laughs> in my view, quite appealing kind of explanation and something that would, uh, how say, uh, bring us the ether dynamics in working, you know. Well, I think we need to stop well, a moment here. Is... Well, can I can I just just explain? So we've got a couple other people on the line that might not know what this experiment is really about. So I think we need to do at least a little explanation of what this diagram is. For those who don't know what this, this is called the Wakefield experiment. Yes. So the diagram that I have shown here is a diagram, and please don't interrupt me when I'm trying to explain this, okay? Sure. So all this sure, is sure. a coaxial cable. And what they do is that, and uh, that, that they charge up this coaxial cable using a nine volt battery. And this is an unterminated uh, coaxial cable. So there's no connection between the inside conductor and the outside conductor. So it basically acts like a capacitor. So you take the nine volt battery and you charge up the coaxial cable as if it were a capacitor. And then you short the outside and the inside to discharge the capacitor. So that's all that is being shown by this diagram. Now, the, the funny thing is that they're measuring the voltage at these various points, like one quarter, one quarter of the way they're measuring the voltage, one quarter, the, half the way they're measuring the voltage, and then three quarters of the way they're measuring voltage, and then at, on, they have a, a measuring uh, all the way at the end. So the question is, what do you think you would measure as voltage when this um, when this is initially closed to be shorted. Now, just just intuitively, you would think that as soon as they short this, that the voltage would would lower going from the left hand side, and so as soon as it got as far as the twenty five percent mark, then you would see that voltage going to zero, and then you'd see the voltage going to zero at fifty percent, and then see the voltage going at seventy five, finally getting all the way to the end. Uh, I guess would be your intuition of what would happen here, but that actually isn't what happens. What actually happens, um, let's see, now you have the, the diagrams here. Uh, it, it should be important to, to stress that this short segment to the right actually represents the long coaxial cable, the terminated, the long coaxial table, table terminated by, how, how is the name of that impedance? The, the, no, it doesn't. I don't yeah, understand why you say that. That's completely yeah, yeah, wrong. yeah. Because in the in the text, it is in the text of uh, there, there is a link for the paper for the papers in, in in this email that I sent. No, I mean what what is shown in your in the diagram is correct. Yeah, but it's shown. I mean, I mean, the focus of this diagram is on those time intervals, you know, twenty percent, fifty percent, and so on. But actually, that condensator gets discharged into the long much longer coaxial cable that has been terminated by the Z0. Mm, no, that is incorrect. You you are interpreting an in experiment wrong, I think. Okay. Is that right, Gary? Okay. But, I mean, okay. the, the diagram uh, uh, is correct. That that little bit on the right is like a, an inch. That, no, that but it represents, it, it is not It is not to, to, to the size, you know? Please consider, it I mean, look into the, the I mean, uh, maybe David, David Ricker can get in, you know, I mean, why? why? Yeah, Harry. There is you link, you know, there is paper, right? I mean, I've been looking for, for, into that for a long time, you know, kind of, I understand your kind of uh, uh, impression, you know. I, I had had really problem to, to, to get it, uh, I mean, that, okay. that quickly, you know. <laughs> if I may say a few things, if, if I may say a few things, this um, this is kind of a controversial experiment, and like I said, I know it's been discussed for many years. Um, well, maybe not that long. I, I'm not it, a couple of years anyway. We've been talking about it, and um, it, the the load that's on the right side of the diagram is a matched impedance. And so there is no reflection. But at the end of the long cable, David, at the end of the long cable, is it so? 
it looks like an infinitely long co coaxial cable because it is a match load in the terminology of electrical engineering. So you're right. But all the, it is is a resistor. Um, correct. But it looks like an infinitely long cable if you were to attach an infinitely long cable. The but if you can, is, you, you can attach a long cable, relatively long cable uh, terminated with the proper impedance, right? So, yes, you have the I mean, impedance on the right side is the matched impedance of the cable, which means there is no reflection coming from the right. There is a reflection coming from the left. So the left okay. is not matched impedance, Good. and what you have is a reflection at the left side because it's an open circuit. So you have a, a open circuit reflection at the left side. So the energy breaks up into two uh, pieces. One piece is moving to the right, and when the switch is closed, and another. Um, slab of energy, as Ivor would say, is moving to the left. The energy that is moving to the left reflects and then proceeds to the right. And so what happens when the switch is closed is the energy that's inside of the cable, let's say it's nine volts, it breaks up into two waves, if you will, or two slabs of energy and one is at four and a half and it moves to the right and the other is at four and a half and it moves to the left and what happens is that it creates a pulse that it appears to be twice as long as you would expect from the length of the transmission line so the pulse comes out twice as long as it's supposed to and at half the voltage you would think the voltage would come out at nine volts, but it doesn't. It comes out at four and a half volts. And that's kind of a surprising thing. It would not be for heavy side, you know? It would not have been for heavy side. <laughs> well, you know, that's surprising, you understand right? Heavy side, right. And, and, <laughs> and it, it's, it, it, like I said, it's controversial. A lot of people have argued about the explanation. Oh, why, why, why it's controversial? I mean, is the, are the experimental results correct? Did anybody, um, anyone, anyone uh, 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 make problem there? Yes. Why? Because yeah. they don't like it, right? Well, yeah. It, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you said, you said that the problem has been discussed, but has been resolved. Has it been resolved? Let, let, let's resolve something, you know. I mean, if we started 20 years ago, 30, 50, 100 years, 300 years, let's start to resolve problems, you know. Not referring all the okay, time that the, me, the problem has been discussed and things like that, right? Let, let, let's work let me, on it. Let, let's, let's solve it. Let me talk a little bit about the issue. Okay, Ivor Cat um, raised this issue and um, published the this experiment in Electronic World in the 1970s and 80s, if I recall. And the 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 establishment sort of has ignored it up until the last several years, and the Italians published two papers. One is in the IEEE, and the other one is in a, a European journal. And they sort of basically said that Ivor Cat didn't, they, they tried to sort of refute what he was saying, but they were talking about the cat question. And unfortunately, they mixed up the theory, Ivor's theory, with the cat question. And they sort of, in essence, um, how should I put it, sort of tried to <clears throat> debunk everything that Ivor Katz said and so basically sweep it under the rug. And <laughs> Ivor has recently replied, but the issue is that the people in the teaching establishment haven't, don't really want to address this problem because okay. it kind of contradicts yeah. what the textbooks say. Yeah, it's not it's not the only domain. It's, it's not the only issue, you know. It's happening all the time, you know. In all domains yes. of physics, right? So well, isn't, isn't the... Uh, can I, 
can I break in here for a minute? I mean, isn't the, the main thing with Ivercat is that he doesn't think that electrical current is actually a flow of electrons, or at least he argues that, you know, when you connect a battery to a lamp, that that um, yeah. what is powering the light bulb is actually not a flow of electrons. And I think that yes. is the most controversial statement he's making yes. there. Yes, I think so, definitely. Um, on that point, there was a... Um, an entire Saturday morning discussion on exactly that issue. And people who are interested in that can go to the NPA video recordings and um, see where Ivor Cat talked about that, because that was a discussion. Um, I think it's been several years now since um, that presentation was made. So Harry, do you yeah, think- something, uh, are those rec- Sorry, are, are those NPA recordings available? Uh, somehow, I, uh, okay, nowadays, that's a good I, I, yeah, you know, because many people are referring to them, you know, but somehow it seems to be, they seem not to be accessible. <laughs> kind of. I think it would be good uh, for uh, us to, to 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 clear this. You know. I I um, okay. I tell you what I'll do. I'll look and see, and if I can find it, I'll send you a link to it. Yes, thank you. Well, the problem is, is that since the NPA split, um, the um, ownership of those videos uh, has changed. For example, uh, some of the old uh, NPA Saturday conferences, I mean, they used to be available on Fuse, but they are no longer available. They've, they've been uh, like archived or something, but the links don't work. Okay. All right. Um... <laughs> The world uh, of that many people had me come up throw it away, right? I, I guess I stand corrected. I guess it's not available. I guess you're right. But uh, this is Corey, possible. This is Corey. Uh, can I be heard? Yes, Corey, go ahead. Uh, am I coming through clear? Because I've listened to the recording before and I haven't come through very clearly. Uh, you're okay. You're not real loud. Okay, I'll try to get a little closer to the mic. Does this help? That's much yes. better. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Franklin, if, if you could share, I don't know if you still have the uh, LT Spice simulation of the uh, coaxial cable in the Wakefield experiment that I shared with you. And I think I might have shared it with others in an email uh, about a year ago when this discussion was I do on. definitely remember it. I definitely okay. remember it. Okay, and I don't know if you had the opportunity, Harry, or anybody else that had the opportunity that did receive that to, to run that simulation, but it does give people the ability to do the simulation uh, on you know on their computer rather than have all the lab equipment that uh, I ever had and get a better picture of how each sectional <laughs> part of the capacitor of the coaxial cable behaves as the wave travels down it. it so I have your diagram it. on, I'm sharing your diagram now. For LT Correct. Spice, yeah. right. And, and what you need is, uh, could you send it an email? Uh, yeah. Do you, do you actually have the source code that, uh, and you need to download the LT Spice, which is a, a free software, uh, and then you can uh, run that software and run the simulation. You can uh, put a, a probe any place you want on that actual cable and see those exact waveforms occur, and you can uh, you can understand why the waveforms occur. Uh, from so how do they look like? They look like uh, as measures, right? Yeah, they, they will look like it measures, yeah. And and the reason for them looking like it measures might be obvious to you if you start to understand capacitive inductive characteristics of a coaxial cable, and I'm sure Harry does that. Uh, uh, for, and uh, But anyway, the I just thought I'd say, if you could still share that, if you still have the code for that, uh, it can't be run, well, it could be probably run on the site here, but... Yeah, it'd be easier if people just downloaded the LT Spice and ran the simulation for themselves and uh, change the characters of the cable or the impedance and see how it behaves differently if they want. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I put mean, uh, the link to your software in the chat. So if people want that, to go and download I mean, it, they can do that. That could be, that definitely could be okay and so, but you know, sometimes solutions and uh, simulations or modeling or whatever, can be misleading, you know. Can be hiding the essence of the of, of, of the of the phenomena, you know. 
And here we should be careful, you know, not to be allow, you know, not allow for, to to be kind of misled, to be, you know, just satisfied. To okay, no, I'm I'm not I'm not suggesting that this is the entire picture. I'm suggesting that from the electrical textbook standpoints, and that this is a simulation based on those textbooks, and I believe the issue really with Ivercat's thing is that Ivor wants to go be deeper into the electronics and and so from an electrical standpoint when you're teaching electronics and that you're not necessarily going to teach the physics of the electron the actual try to model the characteristic of the electron you're going to idealize it and that's what electrical engineers and technicians work with is those idealizations physicists work with the details of how the electron is constructed or attempt to deal, deal with it. Iver is going beyond the realm of electrical engineering and going into the physics of the electron and how the idealized electron moving down the wire is actually represented in the real physical three-dimensional space and how it is basically focused within the wire but it's actually you know, a wave. And so that's what Iver is going into and I think that's that's where they Say well, the textbooks are competing. I I I I am not sure if, if that is so. You know, I mean, uh, the, the the issue is whether the process is happening within the conductor or outside of, of the conductor. You know, right. this kind of maybe demarcation line. But that issue is dependent on whether you're looking from an electrical engineering standpoint and you don't need to know the details, details of the idealization of the electron and the shape of the electron and the wave characteristics of the electron. You just need to know how the electrons interact as an idealization to make your calculations. Yeah, but but look, sorry. I mean, the the the, the important point is would be actually did uh, how to say how to differentiate these two things. You know, one thing is to uh, model current as a process uh, through the moving movement of electrons on whatever level, and the other that energy flow happens mostly outside of the conductor, you know? Correct. And then you get into the modeling of the, of the ether, of the structuring of the ether around the, 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 the conductor, you know? But, but that part totally is totally absent, is totally absent from whatever school, school uh, electromagnetic, uh, I mean, simulations, simulations, spices, whatever, right? No, you're, you're, yes, they, they are left out of the electrical engineering, but they're not left out of physics. So you learn that. But, but, but is it, uh, everything is physics. Every, everything is physics. You know, somehow we, we should look into, how to say, uh, uh, holistically, you know? If I'm, to, if I'm going to tell you how to drive a car, I'm not going to tell you how to build a car. You, 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 if your job is to be a driver, you're not going to be told all the details of how the mechanics of the car work how to build a car, how the, how the combustion... It's not, I, in my view, it's not about that. It's not about that. It would be, it would be for me to, to take an airplane instead of a car, you know? And for you not to know that, you know? Not, not to see that, uh, that airplane, you know? That's the issue. That's the topic, right? Well, the topic is, does, does electricity flow as a flow of electrons? So, so, so do you think that electricity flows as electrons? Well, no, basically. mostly uh, as, as uh, electron-like structures outside of the conductor, in the right. ether, you know? Yes, it all flows in the ether. There is no, the electron is the idealization of a wave pattern, okay? That's, 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 that's the way it is. So it's only a focal point, but we idealize. But look, look, look. The, the electron is, is, is a wave, the standing wave inside the, the conductor. But you know, Absolutely. that very electron is actually inducing uh, similar or kind of con uh, complementary structures within the ether as potentially structuring the substrate. You know? Yeah. That's very, very important thing for all the branches of physics, for all scales of reality. It's very, very important for all the branches of physics. Yeah. You just said it. Like I said, you don't need to know those details. Depending on the level of work you're doing, the level of engineering, the level of understanding you need to do the job, you're not going to be taught all those things. But yes, the electron is not yeah. a little solid, solid power ball traveling through the wire. I agree. You know, the point is people are saying that the books are wrong. The books are divided into segments. They talk about electrical engineering and they talk about physics. And it's for you to tie it together depending on how deep you want to go. And that's all I'm, 
understanding. So, all right, that's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, yes, uh, but Cat did it, you know. Cat did it uh, as third person, you know, very, very, very strong. How, how say, you know, he started as an engineer, you know, for 15 years he was kind of doing the the the, uh, the, the uh, digital circuits, right? And and right. dealing with with, with cross stuff, you know. And at at certain point, after the experience, he got looking into the the electromagnetism, uh, the, the the framework and so on, Maxwell equations and so on, you know. I mean, right. he is so actually the guy who is, you know, still still alive. He is third in the row after Ampere. He heavy side and then cat, you know. Are we going to do something about that or not? So, do you agree with cat's conception? Yes. Yeah, there, myself definitely. All cat did is not the, the what they're teaching is not wrong. What they're teaching is what cat was taught at the beginning. Once he got more curious and he was interested in more detail, then he can realize that oh, the electron is not a little dot traveling through a wire. Okay, but you don't need to know that to accomplish your job at the beginning as an electrical, as electrical technician. As an engineer, you get to know more about magnetic flux and interaction with electrons. As a physicist, you get to know more about the construction of the electron and then the ether. But look, look. If if Kat sees this this drawing that I that I showed, it might be something very very new for him. You know, if he did not consider any process outside of the conductor. You know, that would be very, very new for him and every uh, or anyone on, on else. It was very, very new for me when I when I looked at the uh, Asikovsky heterodynamics, you know, and I'm trying to, so, to bring it to you, you know, guys. But that's because your skills and knowledge develop, but physics has never claimed that the electron was a solid little sphere traveling within a wire. Still, okay, I'm talking, please, please consider, let us talk about electrons in the wire versus some structures outside of the wire. You you know? in the, wire. You, 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 the, the wave travels with light speed and the electrons uh, are massive particles, they can never travel. Cannot, right, cannot. Cannot yeah, travel sure. with light speed. Sure. Yeah, then, then it goes down to what is a particle and, that, and, that, and that's really what an electron is, is a particle. And a particle is also a wave, so the wave. Oh, no, the, yeah, the, the particle, the particle can behave like a, like a wave, but that doesn't mean that the particle is a wave. It doesn't. Uh, yeah. It is a particle. It, it, it can be a wave. It, it can be a wave. It can be a toroidal yeah, vortex. You know? Can it can be? Why not? I mean. No, but it you know, never, it, a particle is never a wave. A particle uh, can behave as a wave. A particle, uh, especially uh, uh, elementary My, particles like electrons, are point-like objects. They no, 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 no. They, they are what? Who is who is talking to? Who, who is talking now? Sorry. I'm a physicist. I'm a theoretical physicist. I know. And your what name? Electron is. My name. What is, is your name? My name is Hans Verlunen. I I I de I uh, have developed a theory. And it's in accordance, in accordance with, with uh, normal physical theories that an electron is a point-like particle. And that point-like particle that uh, can uh, take a lot of locations that together form a swarm. And that swarm can look like a wave. But it is a yeah, swarm sure, of, sure. It is a, a set of locations that look like a wave. It is never yeah, is a wave. Sure, sure. Why not? I mean, the, 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 I mean, actually, every, everything kind of boils down into how we call things, you know. <laughs> and the big, the most of misunderstandings is on that level, you know. No, no. The the world, the universe, has two kinds of things in it that are discrete particles, which are elementary particles. It has photons, which are uh, not uh, massive particles, they are information carriers, they are kind of waves, in fact they are also not waves but fronts that move with high speed and uh, these fronts themselves have no frequency. Uh, photons have a frequency because they are strings of those fronts. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out here because uh, I think we're now getting to than just the cat experiment. Okay, could you then, excuse me, could you then explain this experiment based on your theory? Sorry. What, what you have 
is that the uh, electrons are starting to oscillate in this uh, material and together they, the oscillation creates a wave and that wave themselves can travel with light speed. Okay. Why is that wave get generated? In, in the conductor, within the conductor or outside of the conductor? Um, in the periphery of the conductor. It doesn't uh, travel to yeah, good. that far. Then mostly, the out, then mostly outside of the conductor, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. good. So, I mean, I mean, I think we are close, you know, somehow, you know, as I said. I mean, when you say particle, you know, apparently there is no anything like particle, like, like point, like either point. Every, everything is the structure, just on different scale of the re reality, you know? That's, and that's then they, that's you know what I mean? Oh yeah, okay. I mean, you 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 you, you can model a stop and do things, but you know, uh, unfortunately, you may not be able then to 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 get everything into it. I mean, explain Slobodan, everything. Can and, and, I ask you a yeah. question, Slobodan? I want to ask you a question. Yes. So you have a light bulb and you have a light, I mean, and a battery. So when I attach the battery to the light bulb, what is happening to the electrons? What what is your opinion? Yeah. Uh, okay, what happens? Uh, I mean, when you attach the battery to certain uh, conductor or maybe some some, some uh, resistor or uh, light bulb. bulb, right? Yeah. Light what bulb. happens actually? Um, the electrons, as uh, toroidal vortexes uh, inside the conductor that are randomly oriented, they tend to partially align their uh, their axis along the conductor. In doing so, the movement on the toroidal part of the electrons, that means the kind of equatorial and, and toroidal movement of the ether particles, it actually excites the surroundings, and in particular those that are at the surface of the, of the conductor, they induce complementary movements of that kind in the ether substrate. You know, this is outside of the conductor and inside the conductor. And then those induce, again, within the, 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 the ether, similar complementary uh, configurations. And then uh, the process uh, begins, so actually that uh, it happens so that that movement of such uh, structures outside the conductor is carrying the energy, you know? Not the not the movement of electrons. I mean, uh, 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 longitudinal movement of electrons inside the conductor. You know, that's something really that, that Ampere had uh, had an idea of. Heaviside had it, and Dr. Katz came across it. And well, the question not... is, how does yeah. that movement cause the filament in the light bulb? To glow, to incandescent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Degrees. Now. Now. Okay. When those uh, uh, structures, mostly outside of the conductor, get into the path where uh, actually they kind of recombine, get one the other, uh, then uh, transfer that energy into the structures of the of the of the, of the, of the particular conductor. And this is particular structure and the nature of that uh, filament in the bulb. Then they dissipate energy. You know, they excite those now. Elementary particles, uh, say, or electrons, the vortexes in, in that part of, of, of the conductor, in that filament of the bulb, and then you get the dissipation of energy and, you know, light uh, generation and so on and so on. Then how do you explain inside the battery that chemists know that in order for the chemistry to proceed, it requires uh, electrons on one side and releasing electrons on the other? You know, if we're talking about electrons, we could talk about electrons and positrons. It goes about actually, actually just the, the direction of, of spinning, you know. Direction of spinning of, of, of those vortexes, you know. So uh, the, 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 the dynamically stable structures are actually combinations of two vortexes, you know. And they get entangled with, with each other, you know. You know those guys, they have been experimental, I mentioned last time, you know. Uh, quantum mechanics, mechanics uh, <laughs> experimentalists, you know. They take the proton, and then in the magnetic field, they actually uh, divide it into two, two vortexes, you know? And then uh, I, they I, even I, I, indicate, I, you know, the, the magnetic uh, monopole, monopole magnetic uh, uh, features of, of those structures, you know? So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, that, that force uh, in, in the battery uh, happens actually that uh, those uh, uh, dynamic service structures uh, are separated into two, two complementary, you know, complementary vortexes, you know? 
so we, we may have electrons and positrons on, 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 on those two, uh, like, on those uh, claims, right? Uh, no, I mean, it's a, whoop, are we getting some noise here something, from somebody? Something is noisy, yeah. We're getting some noise here, just a second. Let me see if I can see where that's coming from. Uh, who's making all the, okay, there's a lot of noise coming off of that phone call. Okay. It stops, it stops. Uh, now, I, I'm talking about, there's no positrons, I mean, in, in conventional mainstream chemistry to explain how a battery works. Yeah, you know, but the, what is the problem, you know, that, that no physicists know anything about chemistry, you know, and within the chemistry, there has been pro processes uh, and, 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 you know, uh, phenomena that would be very, very helpful to take into, into consideration, you know. <laughs> so, kind of, well, <laughs> all the branches of science are so kind of uh, separated that there is no way to, 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 to cross the borders, you know. Uh, but, no, but, I mean, you know. let me explain what the argument is. I'm just, I'm just giving you the mainstream argument that about why they would disagree that electron flow is something that goes outside in the ether. Mm -hmm. And one of the arguments is that, for example, in a fuel cell, it takes oxygen and uh, hydrogen, and you know, it combines it combines them into water. And in, in order to do so, it actually has to suck up an electron from one side of the equation and spit an electron out on the other. And that is what we see as the electricity. And the only way that can happen is if electrons are continuously supplied to one side of the circuit. But you know, it's now, just constant, it's just it, model, it, it, you know. But it, everything has to be some energy there, you know, some structures, you know. <laughs> we just can uh, touch names, you know. But but uh, sometimes those naming and modeling is misleading, you know. Hides the the essence, hides the the the, 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 the very fundamental uh, phenomena, you know, that are happening actually on all scales, you know. Well, so the guys from the electric. I mean, you have to explain how a fuel cell works. So can you explain to me how a fuel cell works? If it's not how, moving how electrons, what? how a fuel cell works? Okay, I I, I do not look in, into it, but, but you know, as as I look into this into this, in, into this experiments and offer an explanation, the same way one can uh, be able to offer an explanation for that. You know, I mean, I I really don't have any any doubts. I mean, kind of. I mean, I, 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 I came across this, this work of uh, Dr. Asyukovsky from, from, from Russia, you know, who did the work on that for 50 years, you know. Before that, I, w I was realizing there's uh, some problem that is there, starting from, from the orbital motion of Newton and up and so on. I mean, it's an alternative. I thought, it came to the electromagnetism, I saw that, I thought, okay, how could I do that now? <laughs> how say, to, to overcome some problems. I saw many, many people working on that and came across this guy, you know, and then based on that, I think really kind of everything can be explained, you know. And people, when I'm talking to him, you know, some young guys in Russia, you know, and ask him questions like this, you know, you know what he would say? One has to, 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 to have to work on that, you know. If you have basic principles, and then you just apply them and work on it, and you get the solution, you know. So kind of at this moment, I would kind of play his role here, kind of say that, you know, really. If he was concentrated no, no, on that, then I would be... Happy to offer the, the, the information. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead, Harry. I would Go ahead, like Harry. To sort of interject a little bit here. I I appreciate that you're um, informing us about this uh, theory, um, etherodynamics. Yeah. Which I think probably does deserve us that we really should take a look at that because. My philosophy is I incur, I, I'm 100% in favor of alternative viewpoints. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, what Franklin's question is. And the issue in my mind is this, okay? If I have a battery that's producing electrons going, we'll take the conventional viewpoint, electrons coming out of the plus terminal and going into the negative terminal. Um, the problem is, how does the light bulb get lit? Let's assume that we have a DC battery, which is what I just described. How is the energy carried into the light bulb? If the I think I answered. 
I asked that well, that part, but, but uh, who wanted to to have the answer to the first part that you just mentioned? Okay, well, I'm just trying to explain to um, Franklin that there's a problem in that the electron. How does the electron carry the energy? If the electron is dissipating energy in the resistance to light the light bulb then the only way it can carry energy is through its motion. And that would mean that the current going out of the plus terminal would have to be greater than coming in at the negative terminal because the energy would have to be dissipated in the light bulb. But that's not what happens. So we don't really know how the electron flow moving from the plus terminal to the negative terminal actually conveys energy to light the light bulb because the current is the same going out as coming in. So the energy can't oh, yeah, be yeah. carried by motion of the electron. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 yes, that's a very interesting question. I mean, uh, actually, people think they know how a light bulb works. But when you think about it, you know, incandescent light bulb, you know, people actually have no idea how that thing actually works. But okay. I mean, a long time. How do you feel about my, my, my proposal? I feel that your proposal is not correct. Why is that correct? The current is going in. Well, hold on, we have somebody else. Go is ahead, Corey. Somebody else talking? Yeah, Corey's trying to talk. Go ahead. Uh, Harry, you, you, you said that the current, the same current that's going in the light bulb is going out the light bulb, therefore where is the energy coming from? But the pressure, the voltage across the light bulb drops completely. And that's where you're getting your energy from because as you well know, Harry, energy is current times pressure or voltage times current. And so that's where your energy comes from. The light bulb, the battery creates the energy it reduces the energy by releasing the electrons under pressure, under voltage. The voltage is dropped in the light bulb, and that's where your energy is coming from. Your wattage is coming out of your light battery and into your light bulb. So I think the question that, that uh, Franklin asked about how does the energy get to the light bulb was pretty much answered by the statement that uh, if uh, the... Uh, electron moves, begins to move, it, re it radiates uh, electromagnetic field, which was clarified. Well, I think the step that was maybe not clarified was that electromagnetic field, which is part of the electron that's moving, affects the part of the ele electromagnetic field of the electron in front of it, or near all electrons within that field, and therefore and it urges them also move forward. So the local flo focal point of these structures moves forward as one structure radiates and the next structure absorbs that radiation and that causes it to re re center itself or refocus itself in the center point of that new radiation pattern because it by, by the electron behind it moving, it distorts the radiation pattern of the next electron in front. So that electron wants to stay in the center of its pattern, much like a uh, pilot wave would do, if you understand, if you looked at pilot wave theory. So that's that's kind of like uh, how the electrons Let's see if we can understand this. Um, so I think that should maybe help. That okay. Um, you're there. saying the electrons don't carry the energy. Is that correct? No, You're I'm saying, saying that electron that like motion or movement does not carry the energy. Uh, who, who, whom are you asking? Sorry. I'm I think he's saying that the pressure carries the energy. The acceleration um, of the electron. Sure. But you know, <clears throat> I mean, the kinetic, energy, the kinetic energy of the electron clearly can't can carry the energy because the, the electron is moving very right, slowly. Okay, you know, people, I mean, talking about pressure, you know. But the chemists okay, but, uh, say, the chemists say that it is the exchange of the electrons moving from one atom to another atom that carries the energy. 
but we just said that the electrons can't carry the energy in lighting the light bulb. So there's a contradiction between the chemical viewpoint and the electrical viewpoint. We, we didn't contradict that. The electrons are focal points of energy. You're moving the focal points of energy. That's what an electron is. That's what every particle is. It's a focal point of energy. Whether you believe that energy focal point is a particle or whether you believe that focal energy point is a central point of a focused wave, it's still the same thing. It's just that one theory might consider that the focused wave point is actually a physical particle. But and the, not, others might just consider it's a structural wave pattern. And in, in mine, it's a structural wave pattern moving through a solid. In somebody else's, it's a structural wave pattern moving through a, through a field of particles. Uh, either yeah. way, it's the structure of the wave that actually is moving the energy. But look, talking about energy and pressure and so on, how about thinking about the ether substrate being actually the, how say, medium of extraordinary high pressure? And what it has been being done, I mean, in all the processes, all the, all the scales, is actually to modulate that pressure, you know, somehow to manipulate it, mani manipulate it, you know, to use it constructively, to excite it, to uh, to, to uh, wait for, for, for the uh, response and so on and so on, you know, somehow, without substrate, without that high pressure, without concept and view of all of us, everything conceivably, conceivable, being actually in the big, uh, how to say, bowl, big castle, under high pressure of particular gas, which is viscous and compressible, you know, without that, it's really kind of no avail to, 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 to kind of, I mean, to I mean no, no way to, to arrive at really proper, proper understanding of, of, of the natural and physical reality. A field needs no gas. This is very... Ether, ether is actually gas. I mean, kind of plasma kind of like substrate, you know. A field and needs the, the, no gas. A, sorry? A field needs no gas. A field can exist on its own. Yeah, and, but the, the, actually, and, I mean, the, 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 that's misleading and wrong uh, foundation, you know. Why? Not productive. It's not productive foundation, you know. A field. The universe contains two kinds of things, discrete things that are particles, and it contains fields. Particles are embedded into fields. That's okay, what, if the fields are conservative, if the fields are conservative, where the work, where the energy comes from? What is the amount of work for, okay, what is the amount of work needed for an, an electron to orbit the, 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 around the, the proton? Is that zero, or no. there is some value of it? No, there, there, there is, there is uh, no work necessary for uh, an electron circulating. That is wrong. The, that, the that is wrong. That is the wrong, wrong, wrong foundation. No. There is no, there is no, non, there is no conservative fields in the uh, natural orbital systems. I had that paper on this year. Uh, C uh, N C S N N F S oh N P S. Please look into it. N non conservativeness of natural orbital systems. You will see uh, where the problems in physics and mechanics have been rooted in the Newton law of gravity and orbital motion uh, approach that had been inherited with great people, great minds, including you nowadays. That is the reason that quantum mechanics was uh, built. Because no one could understand that the electrons were moving around a nucleus and didn't lose all of their energy. Sure. That, uh, what about Earth? Why doesn't Earth fall on the sun? Yeah, it's uh, working. Why? The Earth so, is, did did, did anybody okay? Did anybody ask that question before before uh, uh, going into the quantum mechanics? Nobody uh, asked yes. that question. Yeah, it is solved, and and a good physicist knows. It's, it's not solved. It's not solved. I have shown. Okay. I have shown that there is no non-zero work needed for uh, a planet to go around the sun. Positive no work. Energy. Positive energy. No non-zero. It's, it's not zero. No the field is not conservative. There is no energy. conservative fields in the nature. There is a lot of conservative laws in, in nature, but... Uh, is it wrong? That is wrong foundation, wrong conceptualization. Well, no, please look into the paper. 
No, <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to a thing here. I was trying to okay. turn it off. What, what's going on? Oh, we're just going to look at your TV. Um, can I interrupt here, um, Franklin? We spent an hour talking about this. Can we talk about something else? Well, I think it was just getting uh, exciting. I think uh, Slova Down was getting a little <laughs> bit uh, too. You know, guys. You know, guys. I, I came. I came to the conference uh, from Europe, from Serbia. You know, I lived in Austria for thirty years and then got back here six years ago. You know, and came today to, to report about that. I thought I was reporting very, very important thing. It was back to the, the three hundred years uh, in the past. You know, and some people, Viraj and so, asking, are they going to back to nineteen zero five or? Or oh, uh, 1600 and uh, what was it, uh, 68 or 87, whatever. I said, go back 300 years ago uh, in, the, in the past. And I did that. And I uh, provided the paper, provided the, 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 the presentation, you know, and had one complementary presentation for Tesla Tech where these uh, matters of ether and, and electromagnetism and, and, and things like that uh, have, have been exposed. At this point, I would just be free, just uh, I mean, kind of to go away or whatever, you know, if people would be looking into it, or provide the translation of the of the ether dynamics of Vatikovsky, and then just finish activity in, in, in this domain, you know, if we have, you know what I mean. So please consider that. I mean, it's not that somebody. Okay, I I I I came by chance in, into the realm of, of of physics, you know, ten years ago when I work, was working on GPS, you know. I got measurements of uh, multi-path uh, 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 phenomena in Ruban Canyon, in Chicago, indicating occasionally that reflective waves came ac uh, ahead of the line of sight. And I lost a job, you know. And I got working on, on that and saw many, many people on, on, on the opposite side, you know. And then, by chance, I was helping here one guy who had the orbital motion as a combination of gravitational attraction and the anti-gravitational thermal component. And I wanted to help him just, you know, to articulate that. And gradually, I started realizing what the problem was, you know, and uh, uh, kind of reformed that, uh, uh, reframe it, and came into the, to the conclusion that everything uh, had started uh, to go wrong from the Newton himself. And had a lot of information here by Viraj and other things of what the guy, uh, that Newton, of, of the guy that Newton was, you know. He was actually present that theory and was working on the extensions of whatever, you know, just secretly. Not listening yeah, so to, what, to guys like Leibniz and so on and so on. So please consider that, you know. It's not right, that I so just, you I, know, I, I don't care. I mean, kind of, you know, it's not my business. I don't have investment there. And I'm investing now, you know. All right. Well, I wanted to uh, just open up the conversation to other people who have been listening. And I was wondering, are there any other comments out there? We've got uh, 18 people in the conference today. And uh, so we've had a couple people speak. We've had Harry and Corey and Slobodan speak. I was wondering, does someone else want to make a comment on this controversy about whether electrons uh, flow through a wire as current, or do they flow on the outside of the wire as an ether? So I'm going to be quiet, and I want to hear someone else speak. <laughs> I'll be here all day. Okay. Well, I'll call oh, most, mostly. Okay. Yeah. Bed, bath, and I get lost. And we got someone speaking, but they're not talking about our topic here. <laughs> I want. I want to make a command if you uh, if you want it. Uh, yes, the go the electrons do not much more than they constitute an electric field. And then the electric field is oscillating. And this electron field is producing a wave that is traveling the cable. So not the electrons are uh, moving, they're just a bit oscillating. That's all they do. They stay on yeah, the wrong place yeah. sure, most, right. of the, most of the time. What is then they are on the, on the same line. What, it, what is traveling is an electromagnetic wave, and that can uh, go at light speed. Uh, around the conductor, right? Eh? In the conductor, an electromagnetic wave and, is and, and nothing And, and nothing outside of the conductor. There is no ether. There is alone, uh, only an electromagnetic <laughs> field, and that field that can oscillate. 
and it oscillates as a wave from one end of the uh, cable to the other end. And it may reflect against the end. Uh, if it's a long cable, it can reflect against okay. the end and uh, turn back. So what other opinions do we have out here? I mean, me personally, I, I find it uh, extremely unbelievable that uh, current is not a flow of electrons. So I was wondering, is there anyone else out here who agrees with the mainstream of that uh, electrons are a flow of, that current is a flow of electrons? It's uh, Duncan Shaw speaking, Franklin. Yes, go ahead, Duncan. Okay. Uh, I uh, do not think there's a flow of a, any um, ponderable particle. I, I think uh, most likely it's uh, a series of collisions within the wire and along the wire that uh, constitute the flow of, uh, of electricity. Whether those collisions are between ether cells that are within and without the wire or electrons that are within or close to the wire, uh, I don't know. But it seems to me that uh, uh, the speed is so fast that uh, it really needs to be uh, a series of collisions between cells of some kind that are flexible along and in the wire. So I, I'm not sure that that fits with what you're saying, Franklin, but uh, uh, that's my two bits worth. All right, so you're another believer that the electron is not flowing through the wire. Oh, I, absolutely. I, it seems to me that an electron is flowing at all. It's going the opposite direction of the actual uh, flow of electricity. One or two centimeters a second, that range. Just react, react, reactive movement, but not the flow of electrons. Jim Morrison. That is again uh, not a, yeah. Uh, yeah, a ahead, completely Jim. well thought ID because uh, if the uh, electrons keep oscillating, they must uh, touch each other uh, in some way, and then um, uh, the total movement is again uh, not with the speed that the electromagnetic wave is uh, achieving in inside the cable. The electromagnetic wave can travel with light speed, and that's what the electrons never can do. Uh, go ahead, Jim. You're going to make a comment. Yeah. Um, can we consider a parallel plate capacitor initially for, for a moment with an insulator between the uh, plates? And, what, uh, and we're charging it up from... Uh, to some voltage. I guess Maxwell was the first one to say that there was a, actually a current flowing between the plates, the displacement current. Now, I'm of the opinion that, uh, that that's actually a flow of ether particles, which I call trons. Wow. And that there is a flow of electrons in the circuit Electrons build up on one plate and are deficient in the other plate. Essentially, you have the ether particles uh, <clears throat> flowing uh, into the positive plate, the one with, without the, uh, the with the deficiency of electrons, and building up there, building up their their density, and that the um, there's the, essentially a uh, a gradient of the density of the of these ether particles between the plates, which is what voltage is. So there is a flow yeah. of both essentially. Can then these uh, yeah, ether Bill, particles? Bill. Oh, sorry. If, if you would look into the email that I sent uh, today, and then the drawing, and then on the left hand side below, uh, on, on the bottom side. You will see the visualization of uh, what you just uh, were talking about. Okay. So maybe we agree. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what I'm showing. I just put up 
the uh, the diagram that Slobodan is talking about? I mean, I don't understand what this diagram at all is showing. Yes, I I, I put it in the text above. So you know, so you see, uh, the uh, let's see. The other day there was David Bennett, who sent some uh, list of uh, references in some videos, including those uh, guys who manipulate with the uh, so-called smoker rings. Did you did you look into it? You know, the smoker when he inhales the the the, the tobacco smoke, and then exhales it in a particular way, you get the toroidal vortex. Do you know that, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. That seems to be the basic uh, dynamically stable structure on all scales. And in particular, on the level of electromagnetism and those scales down there, I don't know, 10 to minus whatever, 15 or whatever, you actually have an electron, and to that extent also the, 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 the photon, to have such a form. So here, on those five, five uh, double circles, right, on the left-hand side down there, they are actually the forehand sides of such vortexes. So those vortexes represent movement of those ether particles, both uh, uh, around the torus uh, kind of uh, equatorially and along the torus, how say meridianally, like meridians, right? The that that's the first uh, the former movement represents the electrical uh, uh, how say field or mechanism, and the other one magnet, magnetic. So here are depicted the four heads of those vortexes, and those vortexes, based on their structure and the very high speed movement, we can call it waves or, or how to say, standing waves or solitons, as Lucas says, or whatever, you know, they actually induce complementary structures of that kind in the surrounding ether, in the, in the ether substrate. So we have actually kind of flow in both directions, you know, as depicted here. So each of them induce those kind of spiral, uh, uh, like, 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 like flows, Combined with the kind of laminary or kind of uh, gradient uh, longitudinal, right? Like like transverse or uh, yeah, la lateral and long longitudinal, and then combined with each other. So we have kind of really kind of those those Faraday's here in electrical field, kind of field lines, you know. But Maxwell was looking at so on, you know. So you have this. So you have the complementary structures on the on the out uh, on the other side of, of the condensator, as here is actually kind of. The, the, the shield of the coaxial cable. And then I depicted here also longitudinally how it would look like, similar to the magnetic field, except the magnetic field can can structure a kind of into the helicoidal kind of form. So well, that, but, uh, you know, that I interrupt so, you so, a little so, bit here? So here, so, so here, sorry, so, so that would be how kind of uh, I would provide kind of illustration of, of that kind of, and what the just feel was talking about. Okay, I got Go a ahead, question. Harry. This is Harry Ripper. Um, these toroidal structures are those electrons or what? I'm not clear about. Okay, what these so th that, that, uh, uh, just depending which 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 part or which uh, view, which aspect of that movement we look into it. That movement that, that goes uh, like, uh, uh, as I said, uh, how say uh, equatorially, you know. It is well, uh, electric a field. Confused. It, it is I'm electric field, you know. So okay, okay. If if you take, if, sorry, if you take two vortexes of that kind, you know, and uh, bring it uh, close to each other at certain distance r, so that uh, they axes are uh, parallel, say both vertically, you know. So depending on the direction of movement, okay, that okay, is spin. Wait, wait okay, yeah, they will. Sorry, hold sorry, on, sorry. Hold okay, on. they will attract or repel uh, 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 by by one over r squared. And based on the other movement would be one over R to the third. So that would be a magnetic field, and the first one would right. be electric field. So can you slow down a bit? On yes. the diagram on the right, the right-hand yes. side at the bottom, okay, you show these toroids lined up, and yes. their axes are, are aligned, and so they're stacked. Is that correct? Yes, that would be correct. Yeah, okay, that should be. So you're saying that the energy can flow to the right or to the left along 
both to go to the right and to the left. Yeah, is uh, uh, from, from, from the middle of those three vortexes, it gets one direction, and the, on the outskirts, it goes to the other direction. So, okay, uh, the, so plus, the, the plus and dot uh, indicates the, the movement in the equatorial sense. And, yes, okay, and those uh, other, that. other yeah, yeah, sure. But what are these toroids? Are they a structure in the ether, or are they? Yeah, they, they are structures in the ether. Yes, yes. When you take the the, the uh, particles that they have a gyroscopic features, like like turning around, moving quickly, and turning around and on elongated axis, in colliding, they tend to precess, precess. And based on those equations, uh, Maria Stokes equation, one can find actually that they tend to to structure into the toroid, toroidal. How do you say uh, uh, topology, tutorial uh, forms? Okay. And, now, you know, but these yeah. are not electrons. They're not uh, electrons. Yeah, uh, they were kind of counterpart of electrons in the ether. You know, kind of, you know, uh, the, the, the same structure you have actually in the matter, in the, in the elements of matter, as electrons, for example, in the in the conductor. And right, in I the guess ether, I'm a little bit confused. Um, um, I know that Bill Lucas says that an electron is a toroid. And, yeah, that would be the same. Um, are you saying that these toroidal structures are electrons or not? Uh, electrons have such structures. Okay. In the conductor, right. they have su such. What we have here in the ether, as induced, has again same structure. You know, but but you know, kind of uh, now. I mean. They might be uh, differing in, in sizes, differing in the density, differing in the you know velocity of 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 of, of movement of particles uh, uh, that creates uh, them. Uh, when you're talking about pressure, voltage, actually, what happens? You get actually the, the, those now say electrons in the ether <laughs> under quotation marks get compressed, get uh, smaller uh, sizes, uh, and so on. You know, because you're kind of increasing the pressure, right? And you when you you you, you put to attach the kind of uh, resistance or, or the, the, the coaxial cable, they just go uh, away, you know, kind of uh, getting the, the space to, to move. And very important uh, thing, and what was very difficult for me to, uh, how to say, uh, get to understand, to accept, that when those particles, ether particles, move uh, one against each other, there happens uh, for the, uh, 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 how to say, gradient of velocity to increase and for the pressure to decrease, and then they actually attract each other. And the other way around, if they are in the same direction, they repulse each other. But those are just structures, substructures of magnetic field. And when you look into the uh, 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 fact that the two conductors with the current in the same direction attract, then actually when you look what is happening around the conductor, actually uh, creation of such uh, structures in the ether, you actually can explain it just based on that. And the problem that Maxwell has had, the problem of uh, so-called, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, that uh, idle gear, Id idle gearing, you know, Maxwell could not comprehend, could not accept, could not understand how can be so that you have two magnetic lines, B, in the same direction, and be kind of uh, coexisting, not uh, be destroyed. And you, when you look into the B lines, as actually uh, amount of rotation, of uh, cur curling, of this movement of ether, you get this picture as it is here, and you can see here, you have the combination of repulsive and the attractive mechanisms uh, within these structures. When you see the same direction, they actually repulse. And when you have the contrary direction, they, uh, they, they uh, attract. And then that's how that kind of dynamical equilibrium and stability attains. And I hope, <laughs> I think, that if Maxwell could have come to, to it, I mean, or it may have come to it <laughs> just before he unfortunately died too, too, too early. Too, 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 uh, too, uh, yeah. yeah, the problem so, is that he couldn't conceive of uh, a, a smaller particle yeah, yeah. He, 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 he had the, the, the he had the need for existence of kind of idle gearing. You know, you have two, two gears, and you would like to uh, to have them move in in the same uh, direction, right? S same spin. You have to insert one additional gear 
to kind of intermediate, so to, to mediate the, that movement. Remaining... And he was looking for that, and actually it was there, but you know, it was difficult maybe, because all the time guys were looking into the ether as ideal, non I mean, no viscosity, no compressibility medium. Only Tate at Maxwell's time, later Tesla, and later the uh, mostly German and Russian fluid dynamics, in particular those who are dealing with, 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 with gas, so fluids, and Russian, strict, Russian strictly distinguish between fluid, how say, liquid fluid, say, and, and gaseous uh, fluid. Only those guys introduced the ether as, compress uh, as, as a medium uh, with compressibility and viscosity. You know, otherwise, how one could have uh, uh, transverse waves if, if, the, if, if, if the medium is not viscous? And compressible. And Tesla actually was uh, claiming that and was kind of really misunderstood. A kind of, I mean, it was really strange for people to support the long pillar waves in the medium that has no viscosity. That means there is no shear waves. There is no way to get the shear waves. Yeah, even Planck showed that uh, a compressible ether could be entrained with the Earth, whereas the uh the ideal incompressible fluid. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but, but actually, the, yes, but but ether is actually how to say the matter is, is kind of a condensed form of ether. How to say you know? So kind of whether it is entraining the ether or that ether shanks or, or structures are moving, <laughs> it's kind of really difficult to okay kind of to, to 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 gradate you know. And some people tend and that just recently there was kind of a measurement. Uh, that uh, I mean, laboratory measurements that showed the velocity is c plus v, you know, and then they kind of started. Uh, kind of, uh, the, the, there was an explanation by Bennett offered that this goal is about it, uh, uh, how I say, uh, dragging of ether, you know. But actually, <laughs> why not allowing for kind of really movement of that chunk of ether that is structured, like you know, like you know, like like uh, uh, magnetic vector potential potential moving with the electron, why? <laughs> Well, that brings us to another topic that was going on in the in the email thread. So I think we'll switch to that, which is, is that if there is an ether, uh, now there's, we measured the, uh, the ansotropy in the, in the, in the, the CMBR, and it looks like the earth is moving through at, at 370 kilometers per second in the, direction of Leo. So the discussion is is that if we are in, if we are actually moving like that, then uh, would we be able to detect that? And the question is, is whether we, uh, the Earth drags around an, an, a, a bubble of ether around with it, or is it that our experiments are, are such that those effects get completely canceled out? So and I'm just showing a part of the uh, discussion that's going on here. So what do people think? I mean, is there an ether? Is it entrained around the Earth or not? So that just means that my movie is combined, you know. Uh, the, the, you know, those structures, I mean, if you go back to the, to the, to the Descartes, Descartes, you know, Descartes. Actually, he had that, that kind of concept of uh, ether physics, you know. Newton uh, was frustrated because his first reading before he did anything regarding his Principia was reading uh, Descartes', Descartes uh, how say, Principles of Philosophy, you know. So, kind of, uh, uh, that's kind of, uh, if matter on, 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 on each different level, sizes, is kind of getting, uh, is, is, is how is it created from, from ether. The ether becomes part of that matter, you know. So now, depends on which scale we are looking and which uh, sizes, which domains, you know. We can have both effects. You know, well, even, uh, uh, locally, locally uh, I mean, ether being actually part, consistent part of that, of, 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 of that matter. And kind of locally also having some additional in, induced movements, you know, kind of that maybe in that case should not be considered as kind of dragging, but kind of really kind of relative motion or whatever. So kind of really, I mean, uh, it might be <laughs> kind of difficult and, and abstract, but if you know, gets into that, 
as 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 a medium as gas medium under pressure and how Sasha gets uh, uh, out of it and how actually the Sasha gets back into it on higher scales maybe from those galaxies from the center of galaxies for those those jets and things like that you know that somehow you know one can get understanding of 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 of, of kind of uh, uh, Descartes and maybe later Cantor's mathematics uh, and philosophy on infinity and Leibniz <laughs> and get really everything kind of uh, um, coherent and kind of uh, consistent. So, Jim, did you have a comment you want to make? I'd like, yeah, I said I'd like to comment. I'm no, sorry. Let's let Jim. Let's let Jim talk. He he was trying to get in there. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, even Michelson uh, thought that uh, his experiment really proved that uh, there was an entrained ether. The problem is that uh, people are so convinced about that special relativity is correct that. Uh, an easily uh, conducted experiment of uh, sending a, a Michelson-like interferometer into uh, interplanetary space would settle it one way or another. Yeah, but also Dayton Miller did it at higher elevations, and actually he was the the biggest obstacle for for Einstein to get the Nobel Prize for the relativity. Yeah, the problem because is on high elevation, actually the, those effects were were, were, more, were more noticeable, you know. So the kind of, the kind of less uh, uh, ether dragging, right? Kind of, right? I mean, just in support of, of you, Jimmy, just for I'm, I'm just saying thing. that it's all against the mainstream that nobody will fund an experiment like that, even though, you know, it's so obvious. I mean, <laughs> the mainstream is very kind of... <laughs> well, I guess it's my opportunity to talk. You, 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 you yes, know, guys? Go ahead, Harry. Currently, Russians have an advantage over the United States in the domain of non-conventional electronic war. You know, they are working with color waves, right? With the divergence non-zero. You know, I have also American citizenship. Think, yeah, <laughs> you could get back to the guys like, like Barlett, like, like uh, Jose Bedini, and so on. <laughs> Look what they were working, working under the, how to say, uh, outside of the mainstream, you know, totally outside of the mainstream. I mean, more heretical, more, 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 how to say, um, than, than uh, any one of you guys who kind of consider yourselves as, as, as uh, alternate, phys alternative physicists. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Maybe we should try to approach uh, like India or China, with, which have more um, open-minded about something like relativity, to uh, launch one, of, to you know, have one of these, uh, have an experiment that well, would. Jim, what what would be the result if it uh, came up to be a null? Well, then we have to go back to relativity, I guess. <laughs> No, I mean, no, like no, no, no. Is... Okay, so the effect yeah. is more pronounced if, 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 the, if the equipment is higher, at higher elevation, you know. But, you know, there has been that experiment that was reported just recently, no, 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 today, no, no, yesterday. No, no, no. It would have to be like interplanetary because it's possible. No, no, no. Uh, the, the Bennett, the, the David Bennett, the, the, uh, uh, reported about. But like some other guys, well, he explained, you know, offered offered particular explanation as uh, uh, either, uh, uh, how say, um, dragging drag, uh, dragging the ether on the really kind of uh, small scale, where because the effects of velocity of light as c plus v was measured, and then they kind of try to uh, uh, stick to the special relativity and then explain even that with air, uh, uh, ether dragging. So, you know, now, I mean, one can explain any any experiment in different ways, you know, but, you know. you got to go into interplanetary okay. physics. Okay, I'd like to, hold on, a please. Past where the Earth's uh, gravitational field is uh, canceled out by um, the suns. Go ahead, Harry. Um, I just want to make a comment here. Um, the first issue is that we do have a uh, paradigm that there is no ether and the ether doesn't exist. And um, that's kind of a difficult thing to deal with because that's pretty much become entrenched in textbooks. The other issue is that Jim raised about the experiment. Here's the issue in my mind. The problem is there's a lot of experiments out there that show that relativity is wrong, but yeah. it's possible to interpret them that it yeah. is correct. 
<laughs> so the issue isn't doing an experiment. The issue is interpreting an experiment and whether or not that interpretation is valid. So there's, you know, the, the discussion that we were having about the entrained ether. Okay, there's one experiment, well, two, but the airy experiment, if you know what I'm talking about, where he filled the telescope with water, and he found there was no difference in the position of, of no shift in the aberration when well, there should have been, according to the theory. That's easily explained. That, yeah, that's well, easily... the point is that experiment sort of shows that the telescope is not moving through the ether. If the okay. ether is stationary, with, if the local ether is, tra is pinned to the gravitational field of the, ether, of the Earth, uh, then th that experiment would expect to, to behave like that. If, if the aberration is actually occurring out at the boundary of where the Earth's ether meets the sun's ether, mm -hmm. that's, that's the answer to aberration, stellar aberration. Okay, now, yeah. okay. now we understand that, but mainstream, mainstream, the physics books all have a completely different explanation of it. I know, I know. And they, that's why it's they that's why you need so to put, here you have an experiment in interplanetary you would think you, that should be you a, think you have a definitive experiment and you don't that's it put it put it in a ferometer and uh between the earth and mars for example and and that's it uh franklin duncan shaw can i have a shot at this um sure go ahead duncan Okay, thank you. Uh, the question you raised is, uh, if there is an ether, is it entrained? Are we in a bubble? Uh, I think uh, it is to an extent entrained. Uh, if you accept the proposition that ether flows into the earth, flows into the sun, flows into all other cosmic bodies, and is substantially the cause of gravity, uh, that in itself will entrain uh, ether around the earth, for example. If it is entrained around the earth, it's, uh, it seems to me inevitable that that is going to have a, an effect upon the interferometry tests, the Michelson, Morley, etc. tests, mm -hmm. and is going to result in readings that are a minor fraction of uh, what you would expect because of the Earth being in orbit around the sun and going through ether as it's as it is in orbit. So it seems to me that the readings, which are real but not substantial, uh, indicate that there is a bubble, and that likely that bubble is due to the fact that ether is coming into the Earth steadily and is substantially the cause of gravity. So go outside the bubble. Yeah, but uh, uh, may I comment something here? I mean, uh, actually, it's so that the gravity, the gravity itself, is the effect of of ether pressure gradient. You know, so kind of. <laughs> I mean, th there is one guy. Uh, uh, let me say this. There is one guy, ether the, the, the dynamics. Uh, how do I say, it? guy who is uh, uh, pursuing the ether dynamics in Germany. Old professor. I cannot recall uh, his name now. Uh, he even has kind of uh, that, uh, how to say, uh, uh, insight or kind of uh, hmm, concept that matter is all the time dissolving and 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 and, 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 and recreated. You know, all the time. <laughs> that was something that really I could not, uh, how to say, uh, uh, accept and things like that. But you know, one should understand that that matter gets out of the ether. It is considered part of the matter, you know. No, now, the, 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 the scale that we, we are looking at, uh, I mean, uh, you mentioned, I mean, I just to repeat here that, that, that Dayton, sorry, Dayton Miller experiment that was, uh, uh, was a, uh, done on higher elevations and uh, results were more noticeable than in Michael Zemuro experiment. And was the main reason that Einstein did not get, get the Nobel Prize for relativity. So, uh, Corey has raised his flag. So, Corey, did you want to say something? Uh, may I say something? Well, Corey raised his flag, so uh, let's give him a chance. How do you raise a flag? <laughs> uh, 
we'll talk about how to raise a flag when, when you get a chance. Uh, but right now, uh, yeah. like uh, I think you're you're aware, should be well aware, that in my ether concept, uh, ether is a rigid solid, uh, and there is no particles whatsoever, and everything is uh, considered uh, structures of waves. <laughs> There is no need for concerning yourself with either dragging. There isn't it. It's just a matter of what the structure of waves is doing and how they're interacting with each other. It also takes care of, like, Michelson-Morley experiment. It takes care of the Maxwell's uh, confusion about trying to figure out how to make hyper really not know hyper waves can interact and pass through each other. Waves can interact and combine. Waves can interact and focus. All these things can be done with waves, and uh, we pointed out earlier that uh, pointed out earlier that uh, transverse waves can't move through a fluid that is not viscous. So, obviously, and so I basically feel like you know, the whole issue can be resolved by simply looking at an ether that is a rigid, solid, incompressible filling space. Uh, unfortunately, that sounds an awful lot like uh, described his ether isn't really well accepted usually because Einstein's name is associated with a concept that's very close to that. Uh, his, his description of ether, that's almost exactly it. No moving particles and not considered anything like ponderable space. Ponderable, ponderable matter. Matter does not exist separate from the ether. Matter is just patterns of tension energy within the ether. The challenge is to determine what those tension patterns are and how and why they propagate. And tension is propagated, and tension can be propagated without motion. Uh, so uh, I pointed out before that uh, on the surface of a surface tension. That could be also the way to get back to the, to the, the car. <laughs> yeah, so tension of the water is You're breaking up. Rigid. Okay, when you're talking, can you still hear me now? You hear you better. Make sure you're close to your mic. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I hope that wasn't all missed. But basically, it's it's all about the tension between the uh, twin tension within the ether and the patterns within the ether, and that that pretty much eliminates all the fluid characteristics of com competition or conditions, the internal conflicts of any type of fluid always seems to run you up against uh, because fluid can't go through fluid but waves can go through waves and maintain their integrity the waves can also combine and gain in gain their amplitude by combining I mean, like i said waves can't do pretty much and it really, it really turns out that you know, the only way we can really detect matter is through energetic interaction with other matter so what we really are detecting is the energetic of one wave pattern with another wave pattern anytime we detect matter. That's uh, my summary and, you know, my take on it. Uh, earlier, tension All right. Water, surface of the water is just, you know, that's just tension between the molecules. But you have to look deeper down. There's tension between the planets. There's tension between the molecules. There's tension between the... You know, kind of breaking just, up again. Okay. I'm going to sign off then if that's if it's too hard to hear. I'm going to have to use a different device next time if my voice is that bad. Yeah, if, if you can, uh, I would encourage you to use headphones that have a boom mic. I have headphones on. Actually, I'm just talking through my cell phone, but the headphones are on so I don't get feedback. But I'll have to use okay. a different tool because obviously this cell phone is not giving you guys good sound. Yep. Okay, well, we're getting close to the top of the hour. I was wondering, does anyone else have, I think we have time for one more opinion on what's going on with, with Ether. Someone else want to comment? I'd like to make a few more comments. I'm sorry. Sorry. May I? Um, Go ahead. There is nothing what you cannot explain with fields what you could explain with either. And I like fields much better because mathematically, 
they are easy to use. I wouldn't know how to use ETA in a mathematical way. For me, it's uh, something that one doesn't need. You replace no. one thing with another thing. Oh, it's not, it's not only like that. I mean, you have simple mathematics, you have navier stokes equations, you know, really kind of. And, you know, how you, would you be able to get the energy uh, out of the uh, field? I mean, in the uh, fashion of over unity. So get more than you invest. Energy is normally uh, related to photons, to uh, waves that are coming out of atoms that are photons. Yeah, yeah. But to get uh, to get more to get more out than getting in, than putting in. No, you cannot get more out than you than there was in. But not with your not 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 with, with your field theory, but with the aerodynamics you can. With field theory, you can exchange mass elements against energy elements. There is a mass energy equ equivalent. And that's how you can turn mass into uh, waves or into fields. As okay, energy. looks like uh, Cornelius is, wants to make a comment here. Cornelius, you can go ahead. I think we'll give you the last comment here. Cornelius, are you there? We really can't hear you. Okay, I, does this speaker work any better? Uh, we can hear you now. Can you hear me at all? Yeah, we can oh, hear you. you can't hear me now. Okay. Oh, uh, no, we can hear you. Are you not hearing me? It must. It must right be now. delayed. Speaker. Uh, I'm gonna use this speaker real quickly. This microphone. Can you hear this? I can hear that. Okay. I was trying to use the computer speaker, and apparently it was extremely delayed. When I, whatever I said something, it was very delayed. So I'm going to use this momentarily. But it was mentioned by uh, I believe that he says there's only two things, and that is photons and I believe waves. And I think once you get you get around to the, the uh, discovery of, uh, that uh, photons are just focused waves and actually matter is focused waves, you get rid of the second thing and you you just need the fields, which basically the field is what I described, the characteristics of the field is a tensionable field, rigid tension, continuous tensionable field. So I think the, the contups are very, very similar in, in that respect. And, and that can be very well mathematically defined, although certainly not by me because I'm not the mathematician, but it can also be very, very easily visualized by looking at some of those experiments that I, I suggested, uh, how those fields can interact and create attraction and create repulsion, uh, and how those field patterns, I should say, can create attraction and repulsion. So I, I think, you know, what Hans says is, is, a, is a very similar characteristics. I just uh, don't have a need to believe that there, there is a particle characteristic or a point particle characteristic whatsoever. Uh, the point particles are simply the focal point of wave patterns, and that that simplifies things. Bro. Uh, and that's kind of where I think we're in very much agreement on uh, on that respect. Just a little bit of different way of looking at it, perhaps. Okay, <clears throat> so we are getting towards the top of the hour here, so I'm going to give a little summary of uh, what we've been talking about. So, uh, slow it. Slopodan uh, started out our discussion here about uh, an email that he had concerning the cat question. But it, it would seem uh, in our discussions here, we discussed this quite, quite a long time, that what he's showing here is actually what is called the Wakefield experiment, which has to do with the signals that run through a long coaxial cable. So during this discussion, uh, some things came up. Uh, one, one, one of these was a uh, computer simulation of what that coax cable is as far as being a series of conductors and, and capacitors. That was LT Spice. I put that, uh, the, uh, the link to that <clears throat> simulator in the chat. And so certainly one of the answers is that if you just emulate it that way, 
that uh, you can get these, the, what these uh, traces look like is one answer. Um, but the, the core of the question seems to be, especially with CAT, is whether uh, an electron flow is actually a, flow, a physical flow of electrons through the wire. Um, or as Slobodan is trying to argue that it's actually a flow of, uh, of uh, ether rather than a flow of electrons. So in, in that discussion, we were trying to figure out, answer things like, you know, how does a light bulb work? And there's some questions about, you know, what actually makes the filament glow there. And now there's some arguments that, you know, since the current coming in and out would be exactly the same, that, you know, there wouldn't be any work done, but it was also brought out that there's a voltage drop across the light bulbs. So the voltage drop is where the energy is coming out of, which is in one argument. Um, although I don't think we ever actually got to the point of, you know, what actually is making the light bulb actually work. Um, I didn't get a, a chance to throw in my own personal pet theory, which is that I believe that as the electrons are sticky on the atoms, that as you try and move them from atom to atom, they actually stretch like a, like a, like a rubber band. And then finally they break and move to the next electron. And in that process, they cause the, the atom to ring. It was kind of like uh, a, a little toy box, music toy box where you wind it up and the little nubs go across the little uh, uh, resonators. And so as the electrons move from atom to atom, they cause this resonate, this, these atoms to ring. And that's what I personally think is resistance. And it's also the same thing that causes the light, the filament to glow. That, that would be my personal thing. Since I, I kind of believe that, uh, I, I more agree with the, the mainstream that uh, current is a flow of electrons. And the argument I was making there is that if you look at how a battery works, the chemistry demands that electrons show up on one side of the equation and are ejected on the other. So if electrons weren't actually moving in the circuit, the chemistry wouldn't work. So that's the argument there. So, but like I said, the, uh, the, 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 the bone of contention here is whether electrons actually flow as current, although it seems like most people here believe that it actually isn't. Um, then our discussion moved into this question about whether um, the ether is entrained around the earth because um, there is, we do notice this um, 300, apparent 370 kilometers per hour movement of the earth through the CMBR. And that got into some discussions about what the ether is. For example, one, one idea is that the ether is actually flowing into the earth as gravity and would be naturally entrained in, in as, as such. Uh, another uh, point brought up is that the ether is a, a solid. And <clears throat> now I'm not, I'm not quite sure I understand how that solves the whole entrainment or movement of the earth through the, 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 the field. But uh, then we got into this question about uh, whether we should be thinking about the ether as being just a field and then not think about the ether there. So some people like to think that ether is, is a physical thing. Although my only problem with the field is that that kind of begs the question of what mediates the field. Typically, if you have a field, you know, like a field of corn or something, there's like corn in there that makes up that field, which gives something that's measurable. Um, if you make the field uh, fundamental and then you don't even try and answer that question, then I think that's not very satisfying either. Why? Well, my own, my own opinion is that it's easier to build a field out of particles than have a field built out of nothing. That would be my simple answer to that. <laughs> so uh, that brings us to the top of the hour. Um, I thank everyone for participating today. And uh, if you have other questions or you want to go and uh, continue to respond to some of the issues that we brought up today, 
please come next week and we will discuss that. Um, tell all your friends to uh, join the conversation and uh, that will do it for today. So thank you for participating. Thank you, thank you, bye. Let me stop the recording here.